What happened at White Lake this weekend may have been more than an uncontrolled outpouring of hip young people, struggling as they did to survive. First, the 20-mile traffic jams and five-mile hikes, then the intense heat and sudden rain, the thirst and hunger from the shortage of water and food, just for the opportunity to spend a few days in the country getting stoned on their drugs and grooving on the music. In the summer of 1969, Ted Goldman was an 18-year-old from Squirrel Hill working as a lifeguard on the shore at Beach Haven, New Jersey. As the summer came to a close, Ted found himself hitching a ride home. That's when four complete strangers picked Ted up and offered him what turned out to be the chance of a lifetime. They said, well, we're going to this rock concert in Bethel, New York, and they asked me if I wanted to come, and I said, sure, and, um, and off we went. People who went to the infamous Woodstock Music and Arts Fair didn't really know what to expect. I remember people mentioning that they had heard you know, there was a festival somewhere in New York, but, and then you didn't know what was legend or you know, what was really going on. As Ted and his gracious friends approached the Woodstock site, traffic had backed up on the New York State Thruway. It was, as Ted recalls, Just like you had seen in all the movies, it was miles and miles and miles and miles of cars stopped. You know, they would move a few inches and stop. And eventually, people just got out of their cars. And there was a whole parade of people walking towards the site, thousands of people, with the same plight as ours, where their cars were abandoned or fallen over. And it was a lot of fun, really, just going there. From long-haired hippies to, to, uh, to kids just wanting to go up and have a good time. It wasn't, it wasn't a, um, a dress code. And it wasn't just for hippies, it wasn't just, it was just for everybody. And I, I think, don't think anybody really realized what was about to happen. Ted followed the procession of people toward the festival and started to realize the magnitude of the event based on the sights he saw next. And stretching above me was acres and acres and acres for people just sitting and moving. And, was, and further than that was cars and micro buses and, and and it just seemed to keep going and going and going. Uh, people, they were everywhere. And part of the whole experience became the walking. You know, just to meander in and out of the crowds. Every time you stop, there might be four or five people congregating and there was something going on. Thursday came to a close, and alone, hungry, and tired, Ted ventured into the woods. And you'd stop somewhere as you went deeper into the woods, and somebody would offer you something to eat or, you know, some, something to drink or, you know, something to smoke. And um, I found a place in the woods and I slept. It was against a tree and there were some other people around me. And when I woke up early in the morning, I uh, just kept walking and exploring. The conditions throughout Friday provided an atmosphere that Ted remembers fondly. And Friday night was pretty cool. Um, a little fire started up and, of course, food ran out almost immediately. And so then you had the droning of the helicopters, you know, the, the thick thud, thud of the army helicopters, you know, trying to get supplies. And, um, and then um, Friday night was intense. People were really partying pretty heavily. In the shadows of the night, sitting there, um, it was a strange type of beach party, you know, even though it wasn't on the beach. Friday was the first of four days of musical performances at the festival. Over the four-day festival, 34 musical acts performed on the large wooden stage. Among those performers were Richie Havens, Arlo Guthrie, Joan Baez, Santana, The Grateful Dead, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Janis Joplin, The Who, Jefferson Airplane, Joe Cocker, The Band, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Sha Na Na, and Jimi Hendrix. The music became not the focal point, it, you know, it became partnered with, with, uh, with whatever else was going on. And, um, and the groups, although people wanted to hear them and, and, and like them, um, they were almost secondary in, in some ways. Um, as I said, the music became a backdrop. These long-haired, mostly white kids in their blue jeans and sandals were no wide-eyed anarchists looking for trouble. 
Despite the overt appeals for violence by the few political radicals among the crowd, they remained polite, passive, and finally, as the area was saturated, helpless. And there was no violence to speak of. There was no mugging or beatings, or you never felt intimidated by anybody. Um, it was just a lot of fun. But it became strange. I don't know what it was, but it just became at one point being around a lot of people who were messed up. And so it took, it took me off the mark a little bit, you know. It wasn't peace, love, and harmony, though. Everybody was saying it was. It was really, um, you know, let's try to get higher. And the people really were high. And then the skies darkened, you know, biblically darkened. And the wind started to pick up. And uh, the big towers around the stage started to sway. And, you know, and, and people's expressions changed from, um, you know, this exuberant, you know, highness to, whoa, what's going on here? But, um, and then it hit the storm. And it was a driving hard summer rain. And, uh, you know, it just washed everything away. And there was, you know, time that it wasn't fun. And it was just a lot of rain and you were out there, you know, and then it became fun. You know, all of a sudden you work through all of that and then it became fun. It became um, muddy and it became different than what everything else had been before that. And all of a sudden now everybody, everybody was rolling in the mud or playing in the mud. Ted stayed at Woodstock through its last day on Monday to hear the last performer, Jimi Hendrix. His now iconic rendition of the Star Spangled Banner put an exclamation point on the event. I remember Hendrix playing, you know, the Star Spangled Banner. I thought, I thought that was an interesting point, you know, to, to finish what the festival had been. When the music started, and, and there was this feeling of community um, with the festival. It's just something that I don't understand. Why? Why Vietnam? You had this large vocal group of people saying, this war isn't right. You know, what we're doing there isn't right. It's not defined. And you were expressing a lifestyle that was so different than um, what a lot of other kids had to live. And it didn't make it any easier for the people who were drafted who had to go, you know. And I think that was really one of the problems with the war because you had people, kids who might have been, you know, in August in, in, at Woodstock, you know, and, and a year from then, you know, in the jungles of uh, Vietnam. And, and it was so hard to make that transition mentally. It was impossible, almost. The scene that morning was anything but picturesque as the festival ended and Ted began his journey back home. What was left of the site was nothing. It was mud and it, you know some people were just so spaced out they're just still sitting there and, and that was it. That was the end of you know the festival and it wasn't that pretty. That was the thing you know it wasn't really picturesque. In the end, Ted will never forget most of his experiences at the Woodstock Music and Arts Festival in 1969. Over 40 years later, his analogy seems to sum it up best. It was almost like a dream, a really, really good dream. And you wake up and say, God, was that a good dream? And then, so well, I forget most of it. Oh, I do remember one part, but I don't really remember anything else. So that what was learned at White Lake was not that hundreds of thousands of people can paralyze an area and break the law, but that in an emergency at least, people of all ages are capable of compassion. And while such a spectacle may never happen again, it has recorded the growing proportions of this youthful culture in the mind of adult America. Walter? And that's the way it is, Monday, August 18th, 1969. Thank you.